welcome to another episode of our heritage walk about and so i am anil chitrakar and what i want to do is basically tell the story of our heritage which is globally unique with the hope that this heritage which needs many people to help and lend their hands and support to conserve will understand you know these sites much better so that we can all join to preserve protect manage these sites you know for many many centuries to come so welcome to one of these you know globally unique you know water systems so one thing each one of us needs to remember is that in the history of the world there have been thousands of cities that were designed they were planned they were built and because they forgot how the water system worked the city became an archaeological site and then ultimately died you know as a city and then people then move on to build other cities so one of the most unique you know aspects of patan and the city that we are walking through is the fact that these systems have been working for nearly 1300 years kathmandu valley is shaped like a bowl and so it is surrounded by hills and all the hills are forested or they have forest cover so the slope of the hills you know which have the forest and the trees they act like a sponge so when it rains during the months of june july august and september the trees act like a sponge and they store the water and then at the base of the watershed the springs break out and the water comes via canals into the city and it gets distributed through the stone you know water fountains and so the whole city of patan as well as other cities in the kathmandu valley are all served you know by these amazing water conduits and stone you know water spouts so what we need to understand is that for thousands of years and so if you look at this mahabodha area of patan it is you know about 1300 years old maybe 1400 years old and so there are very few places in the world where the water has been flowing you know continuously for almost 1300 years uh, because of this system and this is why the city you know continues to be a thriving you know city So one thing we should also notice is the iconography on these stone spouts. And so if you look at, you know, the animal, so it could be partly a crocodile, it could partly be an elephant, but in totality we call it the hiti monga or the makara. And so what we need to understand is that it represents the water spirit. Now if you look at the animal and if you look at the tail, you can see that it evolves into waves of the flowing rivers. The other thing we need to notice is that you will see very often three animals depicted. So there is a mongoose, there is a frog and there is a snake. And so what we've been told always and we can see this in the system is that the tadpoles breed, the frogs, you know, come up, the snakes go to eat the frogs and the mongoose goes in to eat the snakes. So this movement of the frogs, the snakes and the mongoose is what has kept the system going, you know, for thousands of years. and so once we disrupt you know this movement then the drains get clogged and once the drain gets clogged then you know you have inundation and so this is a huge challenge in maintaining these systems so these are amazing you know water systems uh, but you will notice that this particular one at soga is quite deep and so in nevari you know we call them ga hiti or basically depressions in the ground or a hole in the ground and you can see the water is flowing you know very well you know right now and the beauty you know of these systems is that the water is flowing very well but the steps are too many and so the story we have in this part of the town is that a friend a businessman you know built this hiti and then invited you know many friends you know for a feast you know to inaugurate this tap and then what happens is one friend you know boycotted 
you know, this ceremony or this feast and basically said, what kind of tap have you built? You know, where do you have to climb so many steps down? And then with the water, you have to climb so many steps up. And so these two friends basically competed to see who could build a stone tap that was closer to the ground. So it is little wonder that we don't see this particular tap being used as the other taps because the distance you have to traverse is quite high. Now, one thing we also should remember, as we mentioned, is that all this system works on gravity. Today, unfortunately, you know, we have a system that encourages the use of a diesel pump, which you want to replace you know, every three, four months, and then also the need to burn and procure more diesel every day. And so this thinking, where once you build something that can function for thousands of years, you know, versus things that will you know, not work after three months, but also require daily input of diesel or petrol into them. And so in the debate about sustainability, you know, there is a lot that these systems can teach us. And so for those politicians who say, Nepal only has hills and mountains, and so we cannot develop the country, they should learn that this entire system works on gravity. And so how to use gravity as a friend and as a power you know, for development is something that everybody can learn you know, from this. So one of the challenges you know, in building these spouts is that it basically reflects the state of the watershed, you know, which means you know, how much trees there are, but then also the sponging effect of those trees. And so the people who have built you know, tall houses, they really need to realize that the sand and the stone mining that they do in the watershed is basically reducing the capacity of the watershed to store the monsoon rain. And so when there is not enough storage, then the springs tend to dry up. And then the, once the springs dry up, then the amount of water that flows through these taps is basically reduced. So one thing we have to learn is basically that our actions in the city, you know, and the way we source materials for our construction, you know, can adversely affect, you know, how much we, water we get ultimately for our homes. And so something that we have to, you know, keep in mind. So the reason that local people believe you know, that this particular tap is gilded in gold is because it is so easy for people to get the water because it is so close to the ground level. Now if you talk in terms of an engineering you know, aspect, then basically if you look at the canal that brings the water in, so it is only a few centimeters to a kilometer that it depresses. And so one thing is that you know, when they were built, you know, they did not think that the canals could be disrupted or people might pump water you know, out of the canals. And so the, by the time it reaches the city, it is much reduced. But if you are a jury and you were asked to judge you know, which of these taps should have a gold medal, and if the criteria was how many steps you need to climb down to get the water, then you can see why this one you know, would get you know, the first prize. <laughs>